I want to start off by just reviewing uh, four areas real quickly. And the first one is an update on the lake itself. And uh, I think, you know, the, the lake's been now is, well, is as nice as it's been, obviously, in 30 years, okay? The lake is quite high. It's around 80% full. Uh, you know, if you were here in 2001, 2002, uh, you pretty much know the lake now is about 17 foot higher than it was then, if you can believe that, 17 foot. 16 or 17 foot. I mean, when you were here in 2001, 2002, you would sometimes you would want to rent a vehicle to drive out to the water. You know? <laughs> I mean, it really goes out because the lake is not that deep. I mean, when the lake was down in 2001 and 2, it was probably an average of maybe 12 foot deep or something like that. And so it's up quite a bit right now. The, the very interesting thing is the lake is quite dependent on the water coming in every year. All right? For example, right now, about 40% of the water in the lake right now came this year. So you can imagine if you had a year with no water, what would happen? And, and that was happening because we have about four or five other uh, Mexican states above the lake here which uh, have claim to the water. And in the past they said, if you have irrigation, if you have farming, you need water. You guys down there in Jalisco, you don't do any farming, you know, all you do is drink. You know, and, and, and so you, you, you don't have any claim, okay? But, but eventually, I think the, the political clout of Guadalajara with, you know, five or six million people, it popped in, and then Jalisco became one of the voting members to determine where the war would go. And we pretty much around 2003 got an agreement that said that, you know, the lake would basically they'd try to keep it two-thirds full, okay? And so they started releasing water down this way. So, so right now, I think if, if you look at the lake, if you can imagine, you walk over the edge, if it came up five more feet, five more feet, that would be full. And that would mean the water was going out the far uh, southeast end of the lake, okay? The Lerma River is the basic river feeding this lake. The Passion River on the south side brings in some water, but the Lerma River is the main one. And a lot has happened that has changed things because, uh, as I said, there's more water coming down the river uh, I think there's more work, and it's certainly not, not anywhere near the end of it, of cleaning up things in the river, because we had a lot of industrial uh, pollutants in the river before, and uh, a lot's been done to help that. A lot more still needs to be done. Uh, but anyway, the, the, uh, each year about five or six foot of, of the water evaporates off the lake. Five or six foot evaporates off the lake, okay? Each year, Guadalajara, you know, with a pipe over here at, at, at uh, San Nicolas area, a pipe about big enough to get a Volkswagen in, You'll, you'll scratch your fenders off, I think. But that pipeline takes about one foot of water off the lake each year for about 65% of the people in Guadalajara to use as their drinking water, household water. Um, some debate that, that maybe it's two foot, but it's in that range. There's about one, maybe one and a half foot of the lake each year goes to Guadalajara. So anyway, it, the water used to go out to Santiago River, okay? And there's nothing there going out, like I say, for 40 years. Uh, the water coming out of the, the area around here, out of the watershed, and the rainfall is here. The rainfall here is around 32 inches maybe on this side of the lake, maybe about 34 inches on the other side of the lake. The rainfall is similar to Toronto, okay, the, 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 the total rainfall. It's, it's, it's similar to about 17 states in the United States, more or less in the central part of the United States. But the water comes only in a couple months of the year. And so for that reason, you know, uh, it looks like a dry place. And, and, and the, the the thing here is to try and encourage people to save water. You know, th there's about, I, I figure, one pound of, of sediments in about 7,000 gallons of water. Right. The, the, the water is not that bad. The way, when the lake edge, uh, the water hits that, the waves always stir it up. And because the lake, you can walk out about 50 foot, foot and then you're only as deep as your knee. And so if you have a leg, if you have a, <laughs> if you have a wave, you know, that's as high as your knee, you know, that part of the wave is above the water and that same distance of the wave is below the water because the wave's a circle. And so it stirs it up all the time, okay? And so even the smallest waves will keep the first 20 or 30 foot of the lake muddy looking, okay? Uh, the lake right now is, is in a, a rather good condition because how full it is, okay? And so uh, sometimes we say the solution to pollution is dilution. But the real challenge in water are man-made chemicals, okay? That, that's the real challenge because they're very, very difficult to get out of the water. They're very expensive. And when you have a problem like that, you say, well, I can't do anything because it costs too much money. Right. Okay. Uh, 
Right now, uh, as far as recreational use goes, the lake is very, very safe, very good for water skiing, for bathing, uh, for something like that. Um, uh, a partner and I uh, put up some funds last year and we got about 50 biological tests for uh, fecal coliform bacteria. The limit for, for fecal coliform bacteria in a recreational water is about 200, okay? One quarter of the beaches in California are over that limit every day, okay? But your lake here is not near 200, the tests are around 50. Now, I, I think that, uh, uh, again, the water that goes out of this lake is, uh, as far as it, its total composition of what's in it, it's safe enough by uh, World Health Organization standards, Mexican standards, EPA, USA standards, for the water to be used as a drinking water source, okay? 65% of the people go out drink that water, okay? But one of the things, for example, that's a concern is mercury, and the mercury in the lake and the mercury that you're allowed in your water, okay, it, it is about one-tenth of what it would be allowed in the water, okay? But mercury is something that we're watching in the lake, particularly because of fish, all right? But probably the highest thing in the lake that, that I like to watch is arsenic. And arsenic comes into the lake naturally. There are springs under the lake on the other side. And so arsenic is coming in like that. The lake is shallow enough that the wind coming across the lake, of course, makes waves. As it makes waves, it introduces dissolved oxygen. And when you go east to west, the lake's about 40 miles long, and you can theoretically get big wave. Uh, so there's a lot of wave action. Mm -hmm. And with the lake being maybe, you know, let's say um, 10, 15 foot deep, the wave action extends. And there's a tremendously um, a reliable, high dissolved oxygen content in the water, which eats up a lot of the biological things that go into it, and, it, and it's beneficial, you know, for, for the fish that otherwise probably would not make it in this lake if it wasn't a shallow. The second thing is, since water's been coming in with all kinds of, of sediments over the years and not going out, the lake right now is around 8.7 pH, which means it's about maybe 80 times more alkaline than normal, okay? From a chemical perspective, chemical reactions work better normally when it gets warmer and when it gets more acetic, okay? And so a lot of the things that are in the lake don't have an opportunity to go through a chemical reaction that might make them available, bioavailable to to fish and to us, okay?